we can expect that they'll they'll be once again it's, it's going to be a bit of a bumpy road i think there'll be winners and losers especially on the health finance side we've already begun to see a lot of that in terms of companies consolidating and i think um this year i've, I've kind of looked at it as a as a digestion year you know the ACA was launched. A lot of the businesses kind of changed their business model, health insurers and so forth, um, as did the government. And uh, there were starts and stops and mistakes and systems that didn't quite work the way they were supposed to last year. And so this year is a year where I think now the fixes are all beginning to be put in place. That first round of learning from the launch has kind of now been kind of embedded in the system. And I, I expect that as we go through the end of this year um, and into next, that we're going to start to see the best practices kind of become the prominent uh, proposition and those worst practices begin to fall away. Um, this is a transition year, uh, I think a year of learning. Um, but in the end, it's going to be a year of progress. I think we're going to end the year further down this path in terms of the consumer being in charge than we did at the beginning, and we'll be better at it at the end of 2016 than we were at the end of 2015. But I think it's just a continuum. Um, I, I don't expect big, dramatic changes um, in policy, obviously, or, or in practice. Um, I do think that there's a potential for next year after the elections for us to see tweaks in the ACA as a result of a new administration, whether that be Democrat or, or, or Republican, candidly. Um, I, I do expect that um, you know, there'll be opportunities in 2017 and in 2018 to kind of tweak the system. I don't expect the ACA to go away under either uh, situation, sure. at least not in its entirety.